All right, I'm gonna do a little video here and show how I install a uh, PL259 on a piece of RG size coax. So this is an RF Industries uh, PL259 silver plated uh, Teflon center conductor. The silver plating makes it very easy to solder and uh, the Teflon inner, uh, inner insulator um, is nice because it's not gonna melt um, it has good RF properties. They're, they're just really good connectors. And this is a piece of LMR 600 Ultraflex, stranded center conductor, low loss. Uh, and this particular cable is gonna be a PL259 to an end mail uh, for a project I have. Uh, one of the first things we wanna do, and this is really important, is uh, make sure you don't uh, assemble the cable and forget to put your, um, sleeve on the cable first. Don't solder the connector together on the uh, cable and you can't get the uh, uh, sleeve on. So first thing we're going to do is I do this one-handed unsuccessfully. Let's put the sleeve on the cable and we'll just drop it on there. So now I don't have to worry about that. The next thing what I do I just line up the, the connector on the cable and that right there works and that gives me everything I need to know where to trim back the, the, uh, um, the sleeve of the cable, uh, where to trim uh, to start with and it gives me enough length for the center conductor to reach the end of uh, the uh, connector. So first thing I do is cut the jacket off the coax. So I want to mark the connector enough, um, the connector far enough back where the center conductor will come out to the end of the connector. So that will work. And then I usually mark the coax right here at the center of where the um, sleeve screws on to the connector. So we'll do that. Mark that. And then I'll Take a razor blade and just gently cut the We go. The next thing I want to do, I want all this spray to be soldered evenly inside this connector. So best way I found to do that is to tin the braid. Once we tin it, then we're going to cut it off right about here because that's as far as we want the um, braid to enter in the connector. But I want all this jacket to be screwed. It's all threaded inside here. So Inside this connector, this is all thread. We want the outer jacket to thread on here, which helps water seal watertight the connector. And then from here to here is going to be bare braid. And that will be soldered at all four points around the connector to the pre tinned braid. And it creates a 360 degree continuous. Um, solder connection all the way around um, and it makes an incredibly strong connector as well so let me go ahead and start tinning and the you don't want to add too much heat I just do a little bits at a time just a couple points and then I'll go through and smooth it out. You don't want to get the cable too hot because the 
dielectric between the outer shield and the inner center conductor will melt and you'll have all kinds of problems. So we don't want that to happen. So I got a little bit of solder on there. Now I'm just going to float it around. You don't want too much heat for too long. Need a little bit more right here, I think. Take a look at the side. Right there. Just get a little bit. I'm missing a little spot right here. Okay. So that looks pretty good. Now, line this up. We can see where we want to cut this. I'm going to cool this off a little bit because I need my fingers on it. And I use a lot of isopropyl alcohol. It's okay, go ahead. Okay. So, we want to cut this. Right here, we want the uh, center conductor from the edge, about the center of this um, outer ring where the jacket screws on, to right about the edge of this this neural. And that's as far as we want the uh, jacket to come up. So I just cut it with a razor knife, like so. Get it lined up. I put a little bit of an angle, so straight down. I put a little bit of an angle. To bevel it just a little bit. Can't Push. I have yet to cut a finger off doing this. Flip this over. That should do it. There we go. We have a nice clean cut and separation. And we end up a little bit of I'm showing it from the side because you can't really see it from the top. Got a little bit of dust to clean up. So I'll trim this up a little. So we don't want the braid to get too close to the center conductor for any reason. A good pair of diagonal cutters is handy. Now I'll take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and just clean off the center conductor. Make sure there's no, nothing, no contaminants, no bits of braid, no metal in there. Nice and clean.
You see that? Okay. Now, I'm going to start threading the connector on wherever I put it. There it is. Claire, hush. Straighten this out a little. Now this is the worst part about putting the connectors on is getting this to screw on nicely. You're very tough. And I usually end up having to use some pliers. You see the through the hole, the uh, shield is starting to make its way up there, but this is getting pretty tough, so I'm going to start using pliers here. I just go nice and slow, this takes a few seconds. You see it's making its way up there in a couple turns. And it will actually, as tight as it is, it will actually get tighter once it butts up against the, uh, the top. Do one more turn. No, I think one more. Yep, that is it. Okay, so you can see the center conductor has come out plenty far enough, and all the way around in each hole, you can see nothing but tin copper braid, and the jacket is well insert and screwed up in to the uh, connector body. Now is where the magic happens. We need to keep the connector, in order to solder the center conductor to the shield without destroying the center the um, center dielectric, you have to keep the connector cool. Well, how do we do that? One, we have a high power soldering station. Um, this is uh, 80 watts uh, this tip is an 80 watt tip, which really is essential for this. And two, um, I use a lot of isopropyl alcohol. And I will show you how I do this. Get a little bead of solder right over the hole. And you gotta be patient, the connector has to heat up. And then test it just to see when the connector's hot for when the solder will start flowing. There we go. Now let it suck in a little bit. See that little concave hole? Mm. That means Pull that connector off and you can see how the solder got sucked in that hole there little concave that's the solder getting pulled in as it's starting to flow around the jack the uh the the shield so we cool that connector off that way it doesn't melt everything doesn't melt inside there so one done now let's rotate the coax so i can get another side
Connector is heating up. There we go. Starting to flow now. There it is. That one's done. Let's cool this off. Now you can see that one, same thing. Nice little concave solder flow. Got two more to do. This is the fun part too, trying to get this coax to cooperate with you. There we go, that works. starting to flow there we go nice little concave hole there I got one more to do there it is Revised holder. There we go, it's starting to flow. Get a little bit in there. There we go. Get it cooled off quickly. And you better like the smell of isopropyl alcohol. And you can see each of the holes. Sod now that means it's soldered inside this connector all 360 degrees because the braid was already tinned. So it flowed internally all the way around. So the braid is flowed to the inside of this connector all the way around. The connector is watertight. It's, it's as strong as you can get. You can't pull this connector off. The coax will break somewhere else, but you cannot pull this connector off. Now we just need to solder the center conductor. Have it right here. This makes it nice and easy. There we go. Perfect. Let's do that. I've uh, been doing electronics so long by myself, learned how to just improvise. There we go. Now we trim this off and shoot this across the room. Like so, I'll just clean this up a little bit. Perfect. Now we'll cool that off. Okay, I'll take a little napkin, some more isopropyl, clean everything up really nice. From flux. And that is how we put together a perfect PL259 on RG8. So we're just going to um, check to make sure 
Uh, there's no flashover. Um, check the resistance of the cable from the center conductor to the outer shield. I happen to have this handy dandy HP 4329A high voltage or high resistance meter, which also produces high voltage. So we're going to throw it over here into measurement. And we can see that it's pretty well pegged out. It got zero volts on it now, 10 volts, 25 volts. And if, if we see any problem, we're going to see the resistance come up and read that uh, right now it's reading infinity. There's 100 volts. There's 250 volts, there's 500 volts, and this is measuring basically infinite times 10 to the eighth ohms. There's a thousand volts. So that's a thousand volts between the shield and the center conductor, and it's basically reading infinite. So we can make this a little more sensitive. There's 10 to the ninth. Now we see it reading something, so we're reading, oh, top scale says so reading two and a half times 10 to the ninth. So 2.5 times 10 to the ninth ohms. Uh, 10 to the ninth, I'd have to write that out, but that's that's into the tera ohms. Um, yeah, that's into the hundreds of mega ohms or two 2.5 thousand mega ohms, if my math in my head is correct. So we're gonna, we're gonna back this off and take the voltage off this thing so it's safe again. But anyways, I think it's safe to say at a thousand volts, there's no flashover. And 1,000 volts across the connector is basically equivalent to about 2,500 watts of RF across a 50 ohm load. Of course, without a complex impedance or SWR or anything like that, but 1,000 volts across 50 ohms is roughly 2,500 watts. So that's just the highest voltage I can test with, but that's a pretty good indication that my cable here is good.